Uh, we've been coasting the last few days. We've been doing drywall and there's a lot of it to be done. We got some interior walls, so not only do we have to fill the exterior wall, but then we have to go inside this closet, then go inside the bathroom. There's special drywall for the shower. It's mold proof, so it's a lot of drywall. Been really dusty, getting those nasty gray drywall boogers. So, but um, we're getting it done, and I think we'll be finished today. Right now I'm just sanding off some of this excess so I get a nice clean fit over here in my closet. The glue for what? Yeah, it's in the second office. The second office? Yeah. I think there's a primer and a glue. This is our trusty tool, you know, one of a kind. His name is Bernie, you know, and he's a sander for the drywall. Bernie's good at rounding edges. Um, sometimes it's a tight fit, you sand it down just to get it in there. Does it, is it a big help? Like, does it have to be uh, snug but not too loose also? Yeah, I mean, you can get away with a little bit of spacing. I would say about an eighth to a quarter of an inch. You don't want to go bigger than that though. This one was a little tight, so it'll be a nice tight fit. Pretty close. I think I might have to sand the bottom a little more, unless I can work it in. This side's completely in flush. Let's see if I can get this corner in. There it is. Bam. Nice and tight. Milo! That fits just fine, like getting no more sanding, huh? Nope. That's, uh, it's actually a really handy tool. Um, Bernie. Bernie, yeah. Bernie comes a long way. Bernie's got the people in mind, you know what I'm saying? So when you're putting drywall in, you want to get it tied on the top and you can leave some spacing on the bottom because we're going to be putting baseboard in, and it's going to cover whatever spacing we have. But by getting it flush on the top, it makes it way easier to do mudding because we got to put tape in the corners and mud it. And if there's a spacing in there, we gotta fill that spacing with mud, and then sometimes the tape doesn't go on completely right. So we're just making our job a lot easier. So I'm just gonna hold this piece up while, while Emilio screws it in. Now that he's got <laughs> two screws in, it's holding it up, it's a small piece. So I don't have to hold it any longer, and we can go ahead and secure the wall. Ah, uh, we just keep working our way. Let's find the next piece to do. I think I'm gonna do this one on the inside. And then uh, we'll just finish up the inside, finish up the outside, and then work our way towards the bathroom. Is it cool that like you guys are, like from the inside, this feels like an actual home walls and everything, a closet? Yeah, specifically with this build, it um, does make you feel the whole homey feeling. It helps you feel like, <clears throat> visualize this whole experience with the mini homes mm -hmm. because this is going to be a unit that attaches to another house so someone's going to have their kitchen and then they're going to walk in here and have their bedroom and bathroom and to be honest it's it's kind of a paradox but having these walls in here kind of makes it seem bigger to me just because you have more stuff in here you know you got your bedroom your bathroom which will be a washer and dryer so it's almost like it makes it appear bigger but you know, it's our tiny home. Speaking of paradoxes, uh, chicken or the egg? Uh, the rooster. So we always want to try to use our scraps when we can. Is that way you're keeping these around? Yep. The piece I'm doing now is about 23 inches in width. So it looks like I'll definitely be able to make that. It's like it was perfect. 
piece was meant to be. Yeah, I mean, we could just leave it until we get this other side in. Our next piece of drywall. I'm gonna go ahead and swing this around in here. Yeah, it said this was 23 inches. I needed 3 eighths on it. So I was off by 3 eighths. You needed 23 and 3 eighths? Yeah. Wow. And um, as I mentioned earlier, you wanna, you can have some gaps, but you don't want them bigger than a quarter. Baby gap. Yeah, baby gaps are fine. Uh, just measuring, getting the size of our next piece. It's gonna be about 23 and 3 eighths. Ooh, it's getting hot. So I am marking the piece I'm gonna cut off. So these pieces of drywall are actually a little too long by the time we stand them up. So we gotta shave off about you know, three quarters of an inch, half an inch, just so they fit plumb. Right here on the edge? Yeah. So I got it marked here and on the bottom. So now you're gonna, so you're gonna be uh, shaving like this off? Yes, sir. Cool. We take the drywall square, line up our marks. Then I'm gonna quickly scribe the piece I'm cutting off. Let's do try that again. There we go. And I'm just gonna take my knife, do a quick slit. Does that uh, snap off? Is it difficult? For the little pieces like this, yes. If you're cutting anything past a foot, um, it snaps pretty cleanly, and then you just take your razor to cut the paper in the back, and it um, works pretty smoothly. But with this stuff, since it's right on the edge, it's going to be all brittle. I'm going to have to sand it down quite a bit. But not too bad. So Isabel is fitting in the piece in this hallway. She had to cut out over this door frame and then in that corner to notch it out. So a little bit more tedious than uh, our normal full sheets. So sometimes with these special cuts, you might have to take two or three times before it fits perfectly. But um, it's all manageable, not too frustrating. Sometimes it's really easy to confuse the angles on these pieces of drywall. Um, Let's see, what's a good example? For this piece right here, when we cut it, we wanna make sure the factory edge is on the inside and the cut piece is on the outside. So it meets up and it fits nicely with another sheet. Sometimes, you know, we might space that, factory edge might be on the other side. You can still use it, but it's things like that. You wanna keep factory edge on the top and anytime they meet up together. And then especially for the outlets, and our lights. Sometimes when you're cutting here on the floor, you flip it in your mind. There's been, if you go over to a couple houses, you'll see holes in the ceiling. And other places where they thought, you know, the holes were, but they flipped it around, turns out, you know, they got it wrong. But, um, about dotting your eyes, crossing your T's. Uh, just marking where I'm gonna cut this piece. Yeah. Got it at 23 and 5 eighths for now. Okay. Uh, we are now cutting this piece. I already did the initial split and broke it. So now we just have to cut the paper in the back. I think I'm gonna have my lovely brother Emilio help me out. Who says on camera? <laughs> what is it? Off camera. So you just come in through the back on the paper and then you run your blade. Okay. Does the 
does that make you a Blade Runner? <laughs> Dang it. Taking a couple things through. I always get sidetracked. <clears throat> I'm doing this wall right here, but I looked at this and I'm like, how are we gonna do this? Just pretty much break it into pieces, see what's the most convenient. What what goes through your mind when you're like, oh my god, there's a ton of things simultaneously to do? Do you just kind of break it down, focus on one, or do you multitask? Uh, I do have a bad habit of multitasking. You know, do one thing and then I notice something, go finish it real quick. What I need to do is prioritize because there's definitely tasks that are a lot more important than others. So, what's the priority here for? Um, I'm, I think I want to get this piece done, just because this is the most complicated piece. I want to get it out of the way. I don't have to worry about it, and everything else is just going to be smooth sailing. Carritos are one of those things where it's like you know, do your homework first, like the hard part first, and then you go out and play. Yeah. Um, it makes it a lot easier for me personally, just because, especially in the morning, you know, you knock it out, you work hard, and then for the rest of the day, you're still working hard, but, um, it's not as mentally exhausting, you feel better knowing that it's smooth sailing, you know, you're just coasting through, getting it done. So get the hard stuff out of the way first. Yeah, so this is going to be a full sheet. It's going to be a little hard to get through here. Um, I can't come through here. So I'm probably going to have to, you know, turn it this way, feed it in, just to get it into the space. And then I got to make special cuts for that light, this plumbing, and this outlet. So one sheet's going to have three holes, four holes, and then um, the box cut out. A little complex. A little bit, yeah. And we want to make sure it's as close as possible because if the gap is too large, it's going to show once we put our finish work on. So say we put our light on our cover, the gap is too big, we're going to see it. And that's no bueno. So it's got to be close enough to where we put the covers on and it completely covers whatever blemishes, if any. I think my first tutorial video was uh, muddy, so it's in the realm of drywall. I think I'm stuck in purgatory. <laughs> Forever gonna be covered in dust, blowing out drywall boogers. From what I saw, it's important to make sure that those, like you literally sand down the, the 16th of, of an inch sometimes, right? Yeah, especially when you're cutting off the little inch just to fit it up lengthwise. That cut's not the cleanest. Um, you get cleaner cuts with bigger sections when you're able to break it off cleanly. So um, you definitely need to sand. Otherwise, 
It's just going to rub up against the floor and you're going to be able to put it in there. What's the big takeaway from today? Uh, keep to it. The drywall is taking us. This is our third day. So if you feel like you know, going insane, doing the same thing, just take a breather, take a break, come back at it. Me personally, I don't mind the actual drywall, cutting pieces and putting them in, but the mudding drives me insane. <clears throat> so this is definitely the part where you just stick to your guns and get it done. So you just come in through the back on the paper, and then you run your blade. Does that make you a blade runner? <laughs> Dang it. It's like Olive Garden's uh, endless soup and salads. Bad, but you want more. That's right. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I'm never gonna dance again. That's it, you're done.